One aspect of painting that is often overlooked is drawing. Part of us always wants to skip to the fun part of laying down paint, but learning the fundamentals of drawing teaches you to see like an artist and to truly understand your subject. Spending the time to learn to draw makes you a better painter. I highly recommend that you spend as much time drawing and sketching as you possibly can. Let's take a look at sketching as it pertains to watercolor. When I'm working on an initial sketch for a painting, I try to visualize shapes as much as possible. I do this because it's easier to wrap your head around simple shapes than it is complex forms. Even something as simple as a bird can be hard to draw without visualizing the forms as shapes first. I try to think of shapes in two ways. The first is basic shape structure, or breaking a subject down into the most simple shapes as possible as you begin to draw. Let's take a look at this reference photo of a chickadee and see if we can find some basic shapes. When it comes to birds, I like to use mostly circles. So I'll create a circle for the head and a larger one for the body. I'll add one more here where the tail and wing come together. Now I'll add a few guidelines, one for the tail, for the legs, and for the branch that the bird's sitting on. I think I'll add one more to represent the direction of the beak, and this line will help me with eye placement as well. Okay, so now we have our bird reduced down to simple shapes. Now it's a lot easier to understand the proportions of this bird based on these three circles. Now let's try sketching this chickadee together with the basic shapes that we just found in the reference. But before we get started, let's go over a couple of basics. For all of my sketches and paintings, I typically work on a canvas set to 5,000 by 4,000 pixels at 300 dpi. This is a really large scale at about 16 by 13 inches. Now you certainly don't have to work at this size. Even half this size is sufficient. I do this because I like to scale my work down to a smaller size from the original. But we'll talk more about that in a later video. I'm also using the pencil brush from the course brush set for all of my sketches in this course. When sketching, I hold my pencil a couple of different ways. You may or may not want to do this, but I find that it helps me in making different types of lines, which adds some variety to my sketches. For initial shapes, I hold my pencil with this type of grip because I'm mostly drawing broad strokes with my arm at the beginning of a sketch. For smaller shapes, I tend to hold the pencil from the end because I find that it helps me to be more loose. Then finally, for details, I hold the pencil closer to the tip. This type of grip helps me to be more accurate with my lines. All right, let's get started. Same as before, I'm gonna draw a series of circles starting with the head. Okay, then I'm gonna add that larger circle for the body. And then I'll add that smaller shape for the wing and tail coming together. And I'll put a guideline in for the tail. Okay, now I'll build the shape of the bird by adding some lines in using the circles as a guide. I'm not gonna change the grip on my pencil yet because I still wanna stay loose at this stage. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a line here for the beak and eye placement. Okay, now I'm gonna switch up my grip because I wanna start to zero in a little bit on these lines. Basically, I'm making more finalized decisions about my line placement. As I'm putting lines down, I'm always using my previous marks as a guide, so it makes each successive step easier. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add some detail for the beak, and I'm glancing at the reference to help me with the correct size and proportion to the head. I tend to use straight lines, even around curves. Now this is just a style choice. It's an aesthetic that I like in my sketches. For me, it just tends to make curves a little more interesting. So let's put in a shape for the tail, but I'm gonna go ahead and scale my sketch down a bit. I think I'm drawing a little bit too large for the canvas size. So now that I've got more room for the tail, I'm looking at the reference to get the length of it in relation to the body. I kinda want the body to come to more of a point here just because I feel like the shape needs it. All right, so I'm adding some lines for the legs here. And I'm gonna put in a branch for the bird to stand on. I think I'm just gonna add some marks to represent the feet wrapping around the branch. 
to wrap it up, I'll drop in a little circle here for the eye too. All right, so now here's our initial rough sketch using basic shapes as a guide. The second way that I visualize shapes is through shape design, building out the details of the subject using as interesting shapes as possible. This can apply to light and shadows and even fur and hair. This time we're looking for shapes in the bird's feather groups and wing. I'm tracing the shapes that I see so that you can get an idea of what we're looking for. Our goal is to recognize these shapes and maybe add some interest to them by exaggerating the design of the curves and angles. Now let's finish out our sketch using the shape design that we just found in the reference. I'm going to be working on a separate layer above our rough sketch. Alright, let's start out by taking a closer look at the beak. Now again, I usually add more straight lines than curved ones, but that's something I do by choice just because I like it. Don't feel like you have to do the same thing. We just want to focus on well-designed shapes at this stage. We want to draw good ones because these shapes will eventually act as a guide for the painting. So I like to zoom in just a little bit so that I can make larger strokes with the pen. I find that easier and it makes my lines a little cleaner as well. I also tend to rotate the canvas a lot because I like to pull lines towards me versus pushing them away. And that's just because it's more comfortable for me in the way I draw. So a bird's eye isn't usually round because of the skin that overlaps it. So I'm defining a different shape here other than a circle to reflect that. Uh, I think I'm gonna remove some of these lines and redraw them so that they meet up a little better. Okay, looking at these feather groups for the wing now. Looks like there's a smaller grouping right here. So the wing turns up and wraps over the body in this spot. Okay, let's see, what else is needed? I'll go ahead and define the legs a bit more and we really only need a line to represent them. But I'll go ahead and define better shapes for the feet here. I also need a little bit more definition for the branch, so let's go ahead and do that too. On second look, I think the tail should be slightly longer in relation to the body. And I'll go ahead and scale down the drawing again because I think it's still a bit large for the canvas size. Oh, let's go ahead and turn off the rough sketch layer. Now we can scale it down. And it looks like I missed a couple of lines here around the beak now that we turned that layer off. Okay, now we've completed our sketch based on good shape structure and finished it out with good shape design. Now let's take a look at what a completed painting might look like based on a sketch like this. Even though some of the shapes have soft edges in the painting, you can still see that the shape design from the sketch is still present and comes through in the final piece. 